And welcome to another episode of Hard Factor, presented by the Barstool News Network. It is Florida Man Friday, May 1st. Guys, we made it to May 2020. It is the seventh and last Florida Man Friday in lockdown. Uh, shout out to Hard Hive members Jimmy Ferguson and his brother Gregory. Jimmy hooked Gregory up with both the lockdown turn up and Hard Factor Shades tease for his birthday. They both looked amazing in the picture that Gregory sent in. Hopefully you boys are having a good birthday week. You can still get both of those shirts and the free Joe Exotic tees uh, at the Barstool store while supplies last. You know what he can do, so, Will? I think he, it was his 25th birthday, correct? 25th, yeah. So now that the lockdown's ending, he can go rent a house like because that's like the last thing. Oh, that's true. Age-wise, yeah. 25, you know, like after Gregory, is that going to have a good year? Houses, so Political go office. Yeah, Political yeah. office. Sure, yeah. sure. Good point. True, local office. You could local office and you can uh, rent cool shit. Yeah. Yep. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe to YouTube.com slash Hard Factor News if you want to see our chubby mouths spit out the news in the flesh every day. In some personal news, I've upgraded my lighting and camera uh, for the Zoom videos, uh, so that's how I'm capping off the seventh week uh, total. And second, Jersey week of lockdown with number 77 from uh, Hern Hornets. Yeah, I was about a, to say, that, par- that's your homecoming jersey or no? Oh, yeah. This is, I'm wearing it with part of my take hat because I'm I'm uh, pairing it together. This is the only jersey I know of where somebody was playing football with a member of the podcast. So look, look at that Hornet logo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good. Right. Pretty Pretty nice. Fighting Hornet. Nice. Again, again, YouTube.com slash Hard Factor News to see uh, all of the jerseys that we have. Uh, shout out to our boss, PFT Commenter. Thank you for our jobs. Come on the pod sometime. Better yet. Let's just all go to a beach sometime and get completely shit-faced like a Florida man would want us to after this lockdown is all over. Yeah. Pat, get us going with the Florida man stories. It's Florida man Friday. Guys, 48-year-old Florida man Stephen Lawrence Brickner has always had big dreams. Big dreamer, that's Stephen. Back in 2015, those big dreams intersected with the green rush as more states began to legalize marijuana. Mm. Looking to seize the opportunity, Brickner began raising money from investors to uh, purchase a network of marijuana dispensaries in Colorado. Pretty cool. Pretty that cool. is cool. Uh, mm-hmm. And Brickner, pretty good at raising money because between 2015 and 2019, he raised about $5.5 million of private equity from 60 different investors uh, to start parent companies like First Canna Carm- Pharmaceuticals or First Canna Financial and High Country Healing. Um, uh huh. Yeah, you know, so like the the, the cannabis the tracks related, canna, right? Canna. Yeah, no, it's for cannabis. You're smart, right. smart right. guy. But he right. did. What did they do? Did he have? Did, did he started a lot of companies. Did he? Yeah. So the, I guess the, the I guess the idea was to start these com- companies and then go and buy chains of uh, Marahucci dispensaries in Colorado and uh, you know just let the cash roll in. But okay. Good problem point. is, guys, these companies never really did anything and Brickner got a little bit too big for his britches and blew about three million of the cash on stuff for himself and he's now being charged with securities fraud mm-hmm. what, did he, hmm. what did he buy That's well you're right awesome. so he just yeah. basically he didn't have any he wasn't actually getting any weed he was just getting taking people's money yeah I mean so I'm not totally yeah. sure if it was a Ponzi situation or not because he didn't spend all of the money and, and the companies he promised to set up did exist in a way Brickner knows had, weed Brickner will do it yeah, well, <laughs> it was kind of it was it, it was kind of a it sounds like it was kind of a Ponzi scheme because he was using other people's money to look like he had money to get more money. Sounds like a con. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. it's more of a con. Yeah, yeah when you guys con, hear yeah. when you guys hear about how he spent the money, it'll make more sense. And the companies okay. that he he set up or was raising money for, they did they, they were formed, they were filed with the state, and they did have PO boxes. So that's that's step one. Uh, this may very well have been like a well-intentioned dumb and dumber IOU situation that got way out of hand. I nice. don't know. Mm. Uh, but either way, <laughs> this guy had a good time doing it. Let's look at some of his expenditures. So $1.2 million on buying classic and luxury vehicles, including a 2013 Bentley, 2017 Corvette, <laughs> 2017 Camaro, which is really confusing. Why would you buy the Cadillac of, of Chevrolet's uh, fleet and then buy like the less powerful sports car doesn't make sense. A 1969. Well, are you talking, one sh- that are you you can... talking shit about Camaros? Camaros well, aren't that bad. A a, and then, then a Camaro. Right. I get you. The Corvette's like yeah. the, the upper end. That's but the grocery see, store car. You need. Yeah, right. exactly. You need a nicer one and, and then a, and then one you can fuck up. Yeah. Well, the list doesn't stop there, guys. He's This guy was Camaro crazy. 1969 Camaro, <laughs> oh. two 1968 Camaros. Oh, he's just into Camaros. Yeah, well, he's a just, Chevy I think, guy. Uh, I think Chevy, because he got a 1965 Corvette, two 63 Corvettes, a 57 Chevy Bel Air, and a 1970 Mark, Mach 1 Mustang. Fuck. 
Uh, a right. lot of cash there. $580,000 <laughs> on loans to himself to pay off his mortgage. So notice nice. it says loans. He nice. intended to pay it back. Uh, $280,000 in ATM cash withdrawals, which accountants know is code for Coke money. Mm -hmm. High yeah, interest rates on those, right? That's uh huh. Uh, so he, here, here's where uh, here's a purchase that I think was noble. He spent 465k on crypto coins. So that was just him thinking. It's good. Well, that's that, well, that's how he was going to get it back for everybody. Right. Yeah. That's that's my when I get out of jail money. Yeah, that's how he was going to yeah. get it back because the 280 thousand cash withdrawal was for like you know a yacht and for partying and for coke and for strippers. Mm -hmm. But the the crypto money was no one's going to know this happened money. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And he's, he's sitting there. He's doing the right thing with your money because why is he going to let it just sit there when Bitcoin's shooting through the roof? You know what I mean? Right. right. If, if I he mean, gets he's got your money a, back yeah. for you, let him have fun with the other stuff, right? Yeah. He, right. Well, Mark, it's mm -hmm. interesting you said strippers because none of that two hundred and eighty six thousand was on strippers. Uh, none did of they, it. Be, did because they did they note any of the money? Did it go any of it go to uh, business? I don't. Well, I mean, I think it's like four hundred sixty five bucks to set up an LLC with the state. So, uh, OK, yeah, yeah, at least twelve hundred. What do you mean uh, more money on strippers? I was, yeah, well, all those ATM withdrawals went to well, strippers. because because three uh, three hundred and thirty five thousand dollars, a separate line item. Was was spent at an adult entertainment establishment in Tampa. Uh, That's a good. I mean, strippers? did they? Was there multiple nights on yes. that, or was it a single Just night? Just straight three thirty five on strippers. Uh, that was a specific line item. Uh, that's going to buy you a lot of respect in the strip club, guys. I bet. I bet this guy had the, his picture on the wall in there. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, that's a problem. Room. That's a problem. That's you a think lot. somebody spent a million at a single strip club? Well, He's, certainly. Oh at yeah. He, well, well, yeah. I mean, like young money, but but it's usually not a businessman walking. What's in there the dropping. top spend of any single guy at a strip club? I bet it's time. Mayweather. I bet it's Floyd Mayweather. I just throwing that out there. I don't yeah. know. I think you're probably lifetime, right. like <laughs> lifetime at one strip club. It's a lot of lap dances. Lifetime yeah, exactly. at one strip club. Yeah, um, like lifetime. I don't know if you. I, I would say, that, like realistically, a million's got to be like should, probably one of the top. Should move seven, on. Right? Yeah. Got to be a Vegas guy to yeah. to, to spend Vegas strip club because that's oh, where yeah. the, you know that's that's the you know it's the Las spend, Vegas. How do you even spend that much? I, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Three 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 thirty five k is is impressive. A, a million would be Once really they impressive. Get those fingerprints. You're you're in trouble. Yeah, of course, you're you're, in, you're entertaining a lot. Too. What do these strippers well, have? Twelve vaginas. You're paying twelve hundred bucks per uh, bone, <laughs> and then you're also getting a bottle of bottle of bubbly, and you're buying your friends in the club. So it can it can add up. It can yeah, add up. hush hush money. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And now we're talking. <laughs> yeah, that's that's where some of it could have gone. Yeah. yeah, to get the security some, footage. Some yeah, of, this exactly. guy's this was over the course of four years, so some of it could have put, been put in like a college trust fund too okay. for some of these. Yeah, sure. Yeah, cool. for the children he well, sired with these women. Well. He, I mean, he that guy like he had, a, lot of had fun. a great time. Yeah, yeah so. exactly. He's <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, driving around in his Corvettes with drawing money. That yeah. sounds pretty fun Come to on, me. Come on, Bitcoin. Come on, Bitcoin. That's pretty ballsy because you know you're checking in with that guy if you gave him money yeah. and you're like, is that a new Corvette, Brickner? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you thought I thought you guys meant he had the Bitcoin as like his get out of jail free. Like that that currency will always be there. Not no, that he thought it was going to take off. I thought he thought you it was going to take off. He thought it was going to take yeah, off. Yeah, so value. he'd be able he'd be able to pay oh, everyone yeah. back. Yeah, no, yeah. I meant that. Will <laughs> yeah. I meant that he was going to have it when he gets out of jail after he's caught by this bullshit. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I was yeah. going. I was, I, mean. I was thinking he was going to pay everyone back with it. But <laughs> that that was might be safety money. Yeah. Oh god. All right, guys, let's move on. I know. Guys, we've all seen the videos of cops using tasers on criminals, right? Probably the highest rated cops episodes are the ones that guarantee the watchers a good tasering. I yeah. mean, it's it's it just... literally says taser in it. Yeah. Yep. In, in yeah, the title, you're, and you're like, I'm watching this whole episode. You're tuning in. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I think we've all we've all heard, I'm not even sure if it's true, that to become a police officer, you have to get shot with a taser yourself as some kind of like initiation slash training program. Um, I'm not have sure. Have you if it's guys true. been tased? I haven't. No. Uh, I... No. Um, uh, buddies of mine in, in Virginia Tech in a different dorm, um, they got a taser and they would get drunk and like tase each other. And they're like, "Do you want to do this?" And I was like, "I'm I'm all right, I'm good." We yeah. have one here in the studio. Yeah. We yeah. have we have really a, yeah we have a full military grade or police grade taser here in the studio. Yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. okay. Well, so. well, this I got a question for you guys coming up. So in both cases, whether voluntarily or involuntarily, it does not look pleasant. So before yeah. I get into the actual story, I want to know. What's your number full taser? I'm not talking the little ones that come out and, you know, you, you can you put put to the body. I'm talking the, the police officers that shoot out of the gun right. and attached to your body. The blue and you line drop is a like gun. a sack of fat. 
Yeah, the, the taser is the one that actually shoots the projectile, right? And then the uh, other one's a stun gun. Yes. Are you asking how much we how much we would take cash money wise yeah. to, to do it? I don't yeah. know. I mean, ten years ago I would have done it for like five grand and I was in a lot yeah. better shape. But there now there could be some health risk yeah, now. now. Yeah, I'm like, kill I mean, me. Right. Uh, a million. Right. I might not be <laughs> fit enough. A million to, to survive. A million, but if I a am, million. ten years ago, five thousand. Let, let's no, say let, the doctor let, tells me that I, that you're going to survive uh, a thousand. A thousand. Okay. Yeah. I do yeah, it for five hundred and, 5, and for the gram. Oh, you guys are all over them. I was, I said seventy five hundred. Um, if if guaranteed, I won't die because that's that's obviously the scare now. If I'm afraid, I'm going to go into cardiac I mean, arrest. Guaranteed, but, you're you're going to be totally safe. I mean, yeah, seventy five hundred for me. You're a tough guy. <laughs> Peace of mind's twenty five grand at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, with guys, you okay? Let, let's let's put it in a different context. What if you had? a life insurance policy attached to that tasering. So if you died, your 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 family would get paid out, whatever they'd be taken care of. How many millions are you talking? I mean, that's a the, million. So so yeah, if you die from the tasering, you're cool. So don't worry Single? about death. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I think I could provide more than a million in my lifetime. So this is too. This yeah. is getting too complicated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just just Sorry, say Mark, for, I'm not, just, I'm not just undervaluing you. Mark, just the pain and and the experience. You're going to be fine. What the number is a thousand for you, Will? Five hundred for you, Pat? Yeah, five five thousand. Five, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm seventy five hundred. All right. Well, anyway, so the reason I asked that is because um, a, a police officer in Saint Petersburg, Officer John Pace. Yes, even the police down in Florida can't escape the uh, Florida man mentality. Must be something uh, in the meth. Um, mm. Anyway, Officer Pace was handed a one hundred and sixty hour suspension without pay and removed from specialized units for eighteen months because. Back in 2017, he was engaged to a chick he thought was cool and turned out not to be. <laughs> um, and by that, this chick let Officer, uh, I mean, Officer Pace shoot her with his taser or not shoot her. He, he, he was using one of the ones that he got up close. He used the gun, but he Wait, was getting she a, let him or she let him. She let okay. him. She let him taser her with the part of the gun that you it's direct skin contact, not right. the actual projectiles. Um, and then she also uh, another family friend also let Officer Pace do the same thing to him. They were probably partying with like, yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. Yeah. It grades me, bro. Great night yeah. for Officer Pace. All right. They're like those college kids. He's like, um, all right, so, exactly. I guess if you want me yeah. to. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Which at the time was OK in all fun and games. But like many Florida relationships, the engagement ended. And that's when his ex saw the opportunity to fuck over his life. And you know what they say? Hell hath no fury like woman, a woman scorned. Mm. Um, so she reported him to the Office of Professional Standards, and that's why Officer Pace is suspended now. So, Ooh. come on. Yeah. How, long after, little... how long after did she report him? This was 2017, and she just reported him in October. Oh, that's so, bullshit. Three years. That's which bullshit. was probably three about the same later. time she found out about his new relationship. You know I'm how guessing. much Officer Pace matured in two and a half years? Yeah. He's also, a whole new guy. There's no way he's tasing his girlfriends now. Did did you guys yeah. ever see that? Uh, I watched that Big Brother documentary, like about like the 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 origins of Jackass. Did did you mm. guys ever see that fucking original video of Johnny Knoxville putting a gun to his chest and shooting himself in the chest? It's, it's uh, the most insane shit I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, he 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 wanted to do it on a radio show and they wouldn't let him. And yeah, I saw the that psycho. Shit. It was crazy. That guy deserves yeah. every bit of success he he he's earned. He's earned yeah, it he, all, man. He is crazy. <laughs> Straight to the. Ch straight to the chest, <laughs> shot himself in the. No, Pat, you don't promote the, that. It was yeah. it was like a, it was like a pellet, or it was like a um one of the uh, rubber bean bags, right? No, 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 no. To real early gun. days, pre jackass. He he strapped. He he bought the cheapest uh, uh, armor, vest he could buy. Armor. Yeah, Th three hundred dollar one. That's all he could afford. Goes out into oh, the, okay. goes out in the mountains of California. Gun right there. Pulls the trigger. Shoots himself in the chest. Nothing you should be promoting. Yeah, He's, that guy's because nobody. Nobody would nobody would do it because like yeah. he wanted to do it on a radio to get publicity, but wow, no one would let him. And he's like, fuck it. I'm going to do it myself then. That's ballsy. That's fucking yeah. stupid. Yeah. <laughs> he's nuts. Yeah. We got something else on this. Uh, on nope. This, that's this, it, guys. Taser people. That's just right, the taser. Well. He's the yep, yep, he's don't don't uh, fuck with the woman when you know. Yeah. Don't taser, don't taser people. Don't taser. Just people. in general. Don't taser don't people. Don't taser your girlfriend. Then break up. Yeah. With her. <laughs> yeah don't yeah. do that. Just try not to taste people. OK. Pretty common sense. Yep. Let's move it along, fellas. Uh, this one comes to us from Darm1255, R. Heelman, Cody, and Garrett. And we know there's that many names from the Hive submitting it. It's a good story. Uh, we have a John Wick sighting, or almost sighting, in the Sunshine State, boys. Uh, a guy named uh, Getro Gellin, I think, or, or Jetro Jellin, which I think I'm going to go with Jetro Jellin. Um, mm -hmm. It's G's, though. 
So I'm going to go with soft G's, though. He's 27. He was at his St. Port Lucie home uh, this past Sunday when he was confronted by local officers after a woman told the police that he shoved her to the ground and threatened her with a firearm on his property. I got or on. I think at his home. Yeah, on his property. And the woman told authorities that uh, Jelen may have stashed the weapon in his Porsche SUV. So the cops searched the vehicle and found a Glock 21 pistol, a semi-automatic rifle and a bulletproof vest, hopefully nicer than Johnny Knoxville's. Presumably that's Jetro's since it was in his car. So you guys following with you with me so far? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. In his trunk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so cool. uh, it sounds it's his car, right? It is his car. Okay. Well, right. Yeah. So yeah. that's what happened. But when the cops asked him to explain, you know, where's where where does this all this like uh, tactical gear come from? He explained that the SUV wasn't his anymore because he had actually just sold it to his cousin John Wick. Okay. Ah. Yeah. Let's lock this guy up. Yeah, and then uh, he immediately admitted that he was lying. Obviously, so he has no alibi. Uh, they're yeah. just his guns. He's either like not clever or he's totally insane. Because no, he's just he's just not clever. Three, and then the cops. Three John Wick movies. Right. I, yeah. After doing. Yeah. After he doing could the story. just have short term memory issues and just watch John Wick. And that that's what, but that. But that's what I'm saying. Like the, he couldn't he couldn't think he was going to dupe all the, the police with the John Wick name. Right. No, he like, immediately knew he's just an idiot. He might as well have said like, Conan oh, the whoops. Barbarian. You know. Like, yeah. Whoops. My bad, guys. Yeah. Shouldn't have just made an obvious lie. Right. Um, with yeah. a fictional character. <laughs> <laughs> a very well-known one. Yeah, his name yeah, is. Think cops like John Wick. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, they love John Wick. Yeah, they I love know. John Wick. There's been they many movies in the past <laughs> five years. They love him so much, Pat, yeah. that after I did this story, I realized that basically this guy, like, he just said something so stupid that the cops like repeated it, and it became like a national headline. It's um, Jack anyway. Reacher's. <laughs> exactly. So, anyways, uh, the problem for Jetro. Dirty Harry's. Yeah, Dirty Harry. I'm so Dirty Harry. <laughs> the problem for Jetro is that threatening somebody with your gun is assault with a deadly weapon. Mm. So, not a crime you want to commit. No, it's not. Nope. He's gonna have to learn some better uh, nicknames next time. All right, guys, I've got a double here for you, uh, and the common theme is stimulus check rage, kind of like road rage, mm. but over stimulus checks, right? So R. Heilman uh, sent in the first one, and it's 51-year-old Marvin Smith Jr. Uh, he really wanted his stimulus check to the point that he fought with his mother over receiving the federal payment. You see, he got mm. so mad he had not received the payment by last week. Uh, and was most assuredly drunk. Uh, and then he got so worked up with that combo and yelling at his mom, uh, who was probably telling him to, to just calm down, uh, Marvin, uh, that he set her she shed on fire. Hmm. She shed? Yeah. Do you know what she shed is? No. It's just like it's a, from that commercial, but I didn't know it was an actual thing. Well, I saw it on. Uh, I, I'm familiar from it from um, Modern Family. But I think it's mm. just like a man cave. But it's like a shed that doesn't have, you know, tools in it. It's like gardening and stuff or whatever. A she uh, shed. Oh, she just hangs it's, it's out just in her shed. shed. It's just her shed. I, it's I got a chandelier in there. Yeah, it's just a shed. Her shed. But she shed <laughs> is a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, witnesses told deputies Smith was uh, inside the she shed moments before smoke and flames began billowing out from it. Uh, and then they <laughs> witnesses saw him fleeing in his RV or in a <laughs> RV. You can only imagine what that RV smells like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not great. Uh, um, no one knows also if his mother um, like was withholding the stimulus check or he just hadn't received it yet or most, well, or more likely he's not going to ever be eligible for it. Right? No, I mean, the thing about it is uh, my wife brought up a good point. We got the letter in the mail with with the signature that was like, you got a stimulus check. So maybe that's mm-hmm. what and, happened. Right. So we were talking about it and she was like, you know, some people are, are going to lose getting it busted. when this letter when yeah. this letter shows well, up. That's a very good possibility. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's what it was, though. I, well, I didn't think of that, but I think it's probably child support. He owes. But, you know, no, uh, it, I guarantee his, his mother was like his mother was like, oh, you think you're getting paid? You unemployed piece of shit. Like yeah. you haven't fucking paid rent here right. in in that, a year and a half. That check's coming all, straight to me. All right, good, but he but he could have been informed that the stimulus even existed in the first place by the letter. All very good possibilities. I'm still sticking yeah. with uh, child support that he owes. Yeah, because she just uh, can't take it. 
Yeah. Uh, the sheriff's office, uh, not soon afterwards, caught up with Smith in his RV and arrested him. And he was armed with a knife, of course. He was booked for arson <laughs> and was charged with a handful of other crimes. I'm sure uh, you can <laughs> imagine what they were. They didn't really list them. But um, I got an even uh, crazier one for the second one, and it's a lot more sad. That one was a fun one. This one's not great. Uh, 21-year-old Tony oh. Cushingberry was arrested this week for his alleged involvement in the murder of 45-year-old Angela Summers, who was shot in the chest while out delivering mail in her mail route as a, U- uh, wrote as her, uh, as a USPS mail lady. So she was just doing her fucking job delivering the mail. No. And someone, this 21-year-old cool. allegedly came up and just killed her. Uh, police didn't say exactly what the motive of the murder was, but Paul Toms, who's the president of the local branch of the National Association of Letter Carriers, I guess like their union or, or whatever, uh, believes it was over Cushingberry or someone in his house not receiving their stimulus check. Apparently, mm. Summers reported the people in that house for refusing to put away their small dog that terrorized her when she le- delivered the mail. So eventually in mid-April, uh, after several notices saying, please put the dog away, after the third notice, she curtailed the mail, um, which means that uh, they weren't getting the mail anymore and the residents would have to go to the post office to pick up their mail until they could convince the USPS and the union that they weren't uh, being dickheads anymore. Mm. So instead of going to the USPS to pick up their mail or dealing with the dog, uh, Cushingberry allegedly just found her at a route and killed her. Um, Summers leaves what? behind, yeah. Summers leaves behind a teenage daughter. So fuck that piece of shit. Uh, he probably uh, raised a fucking terrible dog, and that's this is the exact type of guy who should never be allowed to get a pit bull, and now he probably never will because he's probably going away for life. Mm-hmm. Uh, and guess what, guys? Ooh, those what? both those stories were honorary Florida men stories. Come on. That's right. The first guy, the shed burner, was from Louisiana, and the psycho killer was from Indianapolis. The Indianapolis guy, I got to take issue there. That's throwing a lot on Florida there to toss him in with the Florida (laughs) lot. I I almost said to Mark before he said that. The murderer? This yeah. is the most Florida <laughs> reaction to that's a, a little rough, of a, isn't it? <laughs> that's a bad it's, one. It's, it's a, a straight, straight up Florida murder reaction. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bad one. Um, but there uh, you go. See, I often think I'm right, but I'm also flexible. You just have to take some unnecessary verbal geez, abuse, Wes. The and, most and flexible. Stand through it, and if you stand through it, I'll give in. So I like it. Honorary that's Florida awesome. Right. There, you, there it is. All right, guys, getting on board. Yeah, no Lawyers, <laughs> as we know, will go to great lengths to secure new business. Some. Personal injury attorneys have police scanners in their cars and they'll like show up at the scenes of accidents uh, and, you know, try to sign clients. That's what they call them, the ambulance chasers. And, and in Austin, for example, there's that uh, DUI and drug possession attorney, David Comey. That seven, 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 right, seven, seven, right, seven, 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 yeah, Comey does. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's got billboards all all over town, and he has for years with his dreadlocked face on them that says, David mm-hmm. Comey, the attorney that rocks. But I, I don't know, not sure you'd want that guy repping you in a drug case. That's just me. Um, but hey, look, one Florida attorney is innovating this game, uh, and that's because starting next week, he'll be touring Florida be- beaches dressed as the Grim Reaper. Oh, boy. Uh, oh. Yeah. Lawyer Daniel Ulfelder, who's originally from Miami, tweeted recently, quote, Many of you have asked if I'm willing to travel around Florida wearing Grim Reaper attire uh, to the beaches and other areas of the state. How many people asked him that? Yeah. I don't think I don't think anyone asked him. Many, that. yeah, many my ass, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Many people asked, "How did my penis get so big?" Let me tell you, uh, mm-hmm. the answer, he said, is absolutely yes. And then he tweeted a picture of the Grim Reaper sitting on a lifeguard stand. Uh, don't know where this came from. Don't know why. He, People would ask this guy, uh, but I'm, I don't know. I'm not sure what type of law he practices, but I'm guessing it's a state law. It wasn't some type of specialty that has to do with death or something? I, a yeah, like, state law. I mean, I'm guessing he's in a state law guy and he'll be handing out oh, cards. Oh, a state law. Yeah, state there you law. go. Okay. Right. A state no, law. So I, I think he's making it bigger than – I don't think he's trying to attract business. I think it's. I think he's trying to like – do, he's trying oh. to raise money for Democratic candidates maybe. If, if he's being a smart huh? ass about coronavirus, Hillary Clinton? he's going to get his ass kicked. Yeah. Like the Florida people at the beach don't want to be told that they shouldn't be at the beach by some jackass in a Grim Reaper costume. This is like when those kids dressed up as clowns and tried to prank you and that would go wrong sometimes and they get their asses beat. I wouldn't. So he's going to be telling people to get, get off, off the, the beach. beach. Well, mm. da- the Grim Reaper doesn't speak. Uh, it speaks. Yeah, with he points. Sickle. He points with the sigh. Oh, wait, I she, thought he was promoting she, his law. Sigh. He, this is yeah. just this is just a prank to. To, to prove that other people shouldn't be outside? I think he's trying to get rid of the COVID idiots. No, okay. All right, Will. So the law the angle, the, 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 the getting customers angle, that was my theory. Hmm. 
Uh-huh. Right. That was yeah. that was that was the way I was tying it all that, together. I thought I thought it was like okay, yeah. I don't think that's actually what he's trying to do. In fact, what he's trying to do, I think, is he's raising money for the DNC for Democratic candidates to run in Florida or hopefully, something like that. Hopefully he raises enough money what? for his hospital bills. There's going right. to yes, be, well, be a Grim Reaper floating out in the ocean. If the DNC is sending out Grim Reapers onto the beach, that's a bad idea. Yeah, that is not a good look. <laughs> they need to they need to uh, rethink that, <laughs> that uh, campaign strategy. Yeah, yeah. I think he's he's an independent actor. I don't I don't think they asked for this, but uh, interesting. Taking it to the internet, guys. Mark, you're onto something because the reviews they are a mixed. Uh, at Maddie Light underscore thirty three says. You are so concerned about people going to the beach during a crisis that you are going to the beach during a crisis? Got him. Sure. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's like de Blasio running to the thing yesterday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. We saying. Teresa, better known as Mama T, says, you might want to sit outside of massage parlors, too, right after those old men get their Social Security checks. Mm. Uh, Paul. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Paula wow. says. But those old men, like. You know, that might just be like a foreshadowing because they might just, uh, you know, have a stroke when they come. Right. They they're also in. the most susceptible. So, like, if they're right. going out, that's on them. Right. Like, right. And, and I don't know if they would argue with that. Yeah. You know, yeah. after lockdown, yeah. I don't know if they would argue with going out like they that. might need one last rub and tug. I yeah. think it's an essential service to them. Uh, Paula says, hope you have a conceal and carry. Be safe out there. Grim Reaper. Uh, Grim Reaver doesn't need a gun, Paula. He's the angel of death. And then Diane YM says, Mitch McConnell may be upset. You're co-opting his moniker. Woo-hoo. Ooh. Funny, funny stuff there. Um, yeah. How is that? Pol- I don't even understand how. That- but that is political, apparently. Okay. I don't know, bro. This, this idiot's going to be in a fucking full-on black he's, head-to-toe he's gonna be in a full outfit on- in Florida beaches in May. Good luck. He's going to be on a full-on body cast is what he's going to be on. He's going to get his ass kicked. I don't know. I think this is another one of those times where people are going to want selfies with them. Which, people yeah, are people are just going to take pictures. They're no, gonna no, no, no. They're going to want pictures with them. Yeah. I, I think they're going to be like, look, it's the fucking <laughs> yeah. Grim Reaper, bro. I found him. <laughs> yeah. I found him. Oh. <laughs> if you're hammered and there's yeah. a big Grim Reaper guy. I also yeah. think yeah. there'll be a guy. one group, Wes. Yep. There'll be a it's guy true. drinking beers all day just watching him. Look yeah. at that fucking oh, guy over there. Also, is he looking at my girls? Is he looking at my kid? What's he doing? That's true. He's going to take my life. I think he's going to take my. I off. wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. But hey. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's is a it fine, it's a fine line have between a re- pictures and, and hospital for that yeah. guy for sure. Yeah. Also, it depends if he has a real sigh or. If oh, it's like yep. A fake. No, he, he, he's going. He's going with the, the real. The real. Well, I don't know if it's. Oh, he's got a real deal, so he's going to get. He has a deadly weapon on him. Yeah. While he's while, while he's while he's while he's protesting, yeah. he's going to have the stick. I don't Bad know if it's idea. Plastic or... A deadly weapon with a thirteen foot reach. It's not a great, not a great idea. He's a lawyer, you said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Interesting. We're gonna hear about him again. Yeah. <laughs> I guarantee you that. Um, all right, guys, I got another question for you. I'm just full of questions today. Uh, if you can remember, what is the worst lie you ever told to get out of work? Oh man! Like the shittiest excuse. I, the... never, I never killed off a relative. I would say worst excuse off the top of my head is is faking sick. I mean, that's not. It's a just bad always that. I think that's yeah. just always it, right? Yeah. If you just it, like, it's always been like nothing if you don't feel extreme, like doing something. Yeah, oh, extreme. I feel bad. I, I, I faked mm-hmm. a mental health day once. Like, oh, I need a mental mm-hmm. health day because I can't really do shit about that. But yeah, no, that's yeah, about okay. it. Okay. Pat. Pat. I can't. Anything? I can't think of anything. I mean, probably the same as Mark said. I can't think of anything in particular. Nothing mm-hmm. elaborate. I don't think. Uh, yeah. yeah. Nothing elaborate. Well, I, I have an embarrassing one. I once told my bosses that I could not come to work because my shoes had a hole in them and it had snowed and I was walking to work on Capitol Hill at the time. So I could not come to work because my socks would get wet and feet cold. You if had I, no other if I alternative <laughs> pairs of shoes or, or plastic <laughs> bags, that's to what put, I or plastic bags to put over your shoes. Okay. That's what I okay. told them. Yeah. Wes, did you explain that verbally oh, or, or via text? It was uh, via an email, I believe. <laughs> one time, one time uh, at an office I was working at, um, there was a girl who called in because uh, she said that she had diarrhea all, all over herself. Dude, I on, got on, that too. Uh, on the on the way to the that's to a good the, one. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, like, but on you, on public transit. Were so. you the boss at the time, Could, or did you have to deal with that? You were. The, uh, I mean, I I got it like reported to me. But back in the day when Wes and I worked at that fucking uh, hotel when we first moved to Austin, we were doing like room service and shit. Um, some old lady who was like. 
clearly an alcoholic. Uh, she was working as a server too. She came in after us and she lasted a week and she called in like on a weekend one time, clearly hammered. And she was like, Mark, can you tell him I'm not coming in? I was like, great. I got to stay late. She was, like, <laughs> she was like, she was like, it's cause I got, I got the, I got a stomach problem. I was like, got it. She was clearly drunk. And she was like, yeah, I mean, I'm shitting a lot. I was like, I got it. Like, yeah. <laughs> sometimes it just gets way to too descriptive. Yeah, like, and then right. the worst part is the, the worst diarrhea. part about that. Like, yeah. Yeah. Fuck off. Lady. See the worst part. Of, the worst part about <laughs> that is, is we're talking, we're not obviously not naming names, but we're, yeah. we're saying this on a podcast. People, don't want that stuff out, and then they get way too descriptive about yeah. how much diarrhea they're sick. having, yeah. and then everybody talks about Just it. Say everybody sick. talks about it around the office. But the right. reason they're doing that, Will, is so that there's no questioning yeah. that they yeah. need to stay home that day, no matter what the actual reason is. Because you don't want to talk about it. The, you don't want to question them. Exactly. There was like That's a right. barbecue going on in the background. I was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I cut. I accidentally cut Cracking my dick gears. off. It yeah. is bad. It is off. I'm right. going to have to deal with this for a couple of days. No one, one's going to be like, one of, one, uh, of our, one of our buddies killed off an already dead grandmother. Yet, but we won't, oh, we won't get to that. Yeah, yeah get several that. times. Yeah. We lived with <laughs> Killed her off like four times. While we were living with him for like a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, sometimes you, you just don't you just don't want to do something and you'll go. You'll say anything to get out of it. But uh, one Florida man who didn't want to go to work um, or stay at work took a little too far because instead of saying he was sick with a fake excuse, he said, uh, you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. And he uh, he called in a bomb threat. Um, oh, so what's shit. yeah? What's crazy is that Richard Hamilton of Palm Beach was. <laughs> that sounds all... like a bomb threatter. Yeah, Richard yeah. Hamilton. Richard Hamilton. It does. Or yeah. a great three point shooter, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. Like yeah. A fugitive or Wizards? something. Um. Yeah. Hamilton? Wasn't he? Yeah. Oh yeah. Rip yeah. Hamilton. Um. So anyway, he was already at work at the water plant when he said, you know what? I think it's time we all get to leave early today. And uh, he called in a bomb threat. So when police came, his supervisor um, snitched on him. I guess he recognized Richard's voice. And when he was arrested after the building was evacuated and the bomb squad and drones were brought in to search his car, the police said that Richard said, quote, um, Richard stated that there was no bomb and that he made the threats after having a bad day and wanting to get out of work. So that's it. He just called in a bomb threat because he was he was ready to go home. <laughs> he was uh, he was at work and he called it in from work. Yeah, That's yeah, he called it in from work. Yeah, he's no. the kind of guy. There's no in between. He just it escalates straight to the top with Rick. Yeah. It's that's a very impulsive. He really wanted to get out of work that day because he yeah. really could have figured some other stuff out than going mm. full throttle. Just six to all, midnight. Yeah, all the way to the top, popping the clutch right to the six gear. Yeah, mm-hmm. he, I mean, yeah, he could have just quit. You could, yeah, um, he could have quit. Yeah, he could have done a lot of things besides <laughs> commit a felony. Yeah, so he's arrested. He's been charged with one count of uh, a, a fake uh, reporting a fake bomb, arson, or weapon of mass destruction uh, yeah. of public Lots property. Lots of charges go along with a bomb threat. Yeah, oh, and okay. uh, he's been released on ten thousand dollars bond. So he's probably fired too. So yeah, yeah I would imagine. Yeah. Bummer. I won't Back do that there. again. If there's another bomb threat, it's not me. I won't do right. that again. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know what's like strikes me so so much on Florida Man Friday is that we we, we cover a lot of the same crimes over and over again. Bomb threats, they're all bomb threats they're, new. They're all bomb threats kind of new. Yeah. I feel like we've had similar things though, like other types of like public threats, and it just always ends poorly. Anyways, yeah. cautionary tales. All these things. Pretty yeah. Much. All right. Uh, here's another one. Uh, people are drinking bleach. Fellas. Oh, no. Uh, presumably two Florida men living in the Atlanta area have been hospitalized. This is another another honorary Florida man. These are actually Georgia men uh, have been oh, hospitalized. Look yeah. at that, Wes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, this, tough this, on this me. Tossing works. bleach drinkers into Florida, you, guys wanna, so. you guys just want to let it all fucking fall apart. <laughs> you want to just let you just want to let it disintegrate. <laughs> <laughs> What's holy anyway? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, the, the, I, they're in Atlanta, so they're not even that close to Florida. Uh, sorry. Anyways, these, these guys in the Atlanta area, two of them have been hospitalized this week. One man drank a pint of bleach, 16 Ooh. ounces. And Jesus so he Christ. required a little 24 hours to get that out of his system. The other he man survived that. Oh, yeah. No problem. Uh, the other man ingested a mixture no of pine saw, other household cleaners, beer, medication and mouthwash uh, as his um, coronavirus prevention concoction. Neither of these guys have coronavirus. Yeah, that's the they problem. were just but they were is, just taking it. This yeah. is the problem. They're never going to get it. and They're going to be like, it works. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. yeah. No. They exactly. It's, they said they were like uh, basically preventative measures. Yeah. They think it's gonna. Um, they think that that probably worked for 
don't know. I yeah. think there's just coincidence that coronavirus is going on right now. I think these guys probably do this stuff some other times too, you know? Interesting, interesting point, Wes, because uh, <laughs> there are existing concerns among the staff about the mental dis- disposition of both men. Mm. Um, I'm not sure that it wasn't like released officially if they have, right. you know, uh, yeah. long histories or whatever, but they both should be okay after their trips to the ER. While there is no evidence that either of these guys drank the cleaning supply uh, concoction potion, rather, uh, at the uh, encouragement of President Trump's speech last week, which we covered on the show, uh, the ER doctor did note that uh, general generally the rate of calls coming into hospitals and uh, everybody inquiring about the safety of drinking cleaning supplies has been through the roof <laughs> even before Trump said anything, whether oh, you think it was a joke or not, but what uh, about cleaning supplies. Like, I was thinking like huffing gas, you know, you get it, right? Yeah. You get like a little bit of a high, right? Like uh, a lot of bit of a high, but... Uh, what does drinking bleach do? So so it, the same reason that Trump mm. kind of, suge- you know, like went from the logic of disinfectant kills this thing. What if we put it in our bodies? Wouldn't it kill this thing? Is mm. the same logic quacks have been using for years in terms of treating ailments with bleach like autism, well, herpes, yeah. oh. et cetera. Like, you, okay. they, you know, just like there's just a leap. It's like, well, bleach so, cleans this. So it'll clean so the mess- inside of me. too. So message boards are word of mouth. In the, right. in, the, in the underground bleach community. For it's just people, yeah. people, look, people look, people want to believe in potions, guys. Mm-hmm. All right. And just people like they think that they're going to make a magic potion. And that's just you're not going to stop mean, some of these people from thinking I, that they're going to make a potion. That's what I do with alcohol. That's what I tell exactly. Them. That's, that's what I say. Mark. I do that, I'm like, hey, I'm going to have to drink a lot of alcohol. Yeah. Tonight right. Because can you say it's, it's extreme. Can you say it's not working. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and <laughs> yes. people. People don't call you crazy, but they call these people crazy who drink pine salt. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's a good point. It's a little bit. But, but I do it to get, you know, like a buzz. Like, that's what I'm saying. Do you get a buzz? Well, from this? That's what I'm saying. you know, it's it's all uh, what do they say. Uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Okay. So, I mean, different Getting violently for different sick folks. could be a, a, a euphoric rush for some people. It could it makes be. Makes you feel good. And, yeah. I feel alive. Like. Like going to the dentist or like, you know, yeah. like uh, I, getting a health checkup. Like, hey, I, you know, almost, I took care of myself today. Almost died. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have to uh, reiterate, neither of these men have had or uh, currently have the coronavirus. Here's a quote from somebody who's working in uh, on the ground there. He says, even before the president made any of these comments, we were getting calls from people doing anything from drinking hand sanitizer to gargling with bleach. Yeah. And that was from Gaylord Lopez, director of the Georgia Poison Control Center. Yeah. So trust Gaylord. He says this is just uh, status this is just, quo. Yeah. yeah, this is what it's, happens. It's it's I'm sure the rates have gone up, but most of these are just happen to go happen to be like, oh, coronavirus is happening. This this it's just coincidence now. You know, no, the, the, there's people, no way there's no way it's not influenced by. I know the, it's influenced, but I'm saying a lot saying, of these things still were happening without <laughs> coronavirus. OK, <laughs> no, that's what Gaylord says. Yeah. Gaylord says he's like he's like, the, yeah. look, people drink bleach all the time. <laughs> yeah, people think, are just crazy. <laughs> I, think, I, think you're, I think you're both right. I think everyone's right. I'm pretty sure everyone's right. You're all, right. all right, guys. Last Florida man story of the week. And this one is from Florida, but it's a little bit different. Uh, Craig McFarland, a student at Stanton College Prep. Prep, prep, I'm just going to say prep school in Jacksonville has been uh, accepted to all eight Ivy League schools, and that's because he has a 4.98 GPA. Damn. Did you hear wow. That? You hear that? I all smell, eight I, Ivy I, Leagues? I smell bullshit, well, Mark. How well, can you get a 5.0? That's not even possible. Well, I guess it is nowadays. I guess he started taking AP classes as a freshman and took a lot of them, and he never got like a B. He always got an A in every class he took, and it's like a – I don't know if it's a 5.0 scale now in some of these advanced AP classes or what, but yeah, that you can r- rig the deck. Like back when we were in high school, literally the highest you could get, I think, was a 4.2. There was like a very limited AP class. Right, because you could only have like maybe a couple APs in there. Maybe 10 throughout your high school career. Right. Maybe. Uh, also, we had like the 1600 point SATs instead of the, what is it, like 5 billion now. Um, but this <laughs> guy got a 4.98. Now, it's, that's impressive. Never got a B in four years. For, that's sad uh, that they got to give themselves more points these days. Well, it kind of sucks for yeah. non-prep schools that don't have AP because when you have a 4.0 in a school without AP courses, you're what was getting, it hurting people's smashed. feelings. To sc- yeah, well, you're getting people sm- a 4.0, you're below, get, you don't below. get accepted with a 4.0 anymore. Uh, first, oh. Yale sent him a letter uh, saying he got in. And then Harvard, Princeton, Columbia, the University of Pennsylvania, Brown, Dartmouth, and Cornell, all eight fucking uh, were like, hey, 
Craig, we want you. We want you in your 4.98 big brain. It's a pretty goddamn impressive. McFarland yeah. said he plans to study medicine or law. Or law. Good call, buddy. You're going to do well in that, I'm sure. His mother, Donna Bell Santiago, said he was always showing strong initiative. Uh, no shit, Donna Bell. Um, she also said... Um, he never uh, played outside. Right. Uh, she also said, I have three kids, and I told them I don't accept uh, B as a grade because I know they can bring in uh, A's. So... That sounds like a fun household to grow up in. Not a lot of drug use going on in that yeah, house. Yeah, this kid's yeah. going to handle all the beers that get thrown in his face real easy. <laughs> I agree. I mean, unless they're doing Adderall, not a lot of drug use in that house. But 4.98 is very <laughs> fucking impressive. Congratulations, Craig. And to Will's point, take some time in college to have a few pints of beer and chase some skirts. Use that big brain shorts, to figure out how to not whatever yeah, you how prefer. To not You've earned so, it. off the ledge. You've earned yeah. it. Cut, I got, cut loose a little bit. <laughs> I got a quick update, guys. So yeah. initially when Mark said 4.98, I, I said probably bullshit. Probably bullshit. Yeah. Probably charter school. Not the case. Stanford, Stanford Preparatory, whatever, Stanford is a uh, renowned academic school. However. Jacksonville Prep. Stanton, yeah. However, the assistant principal of Stanton College Prep was arrested <laughs> just an hour ago and charged uh, with no aggravated way. battery on a pregnant woman. Are you in serious? an incident Whoa. in which her daughter was also arrested for domestic battery. Look at this uh, Big J journalism live updates. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In an unrelated, in an unrelated incident, the school's interna international baccalaureate coordinator was accused of having an inappropriate relationship with a student. Oh, shit. These are two incidents. Was it Craig? So there, yeah, there's an attack on a well. pregnant woman from the assistant principal, <laughs> and there's a teacher banging did a Craig, student. Did Craig sleep his way to the top? No. Good this Lord. sucks for Craig. The th yeah. Now the third no, headline. It no, it doesn't. No, the th third headline is oh. Craig. Right well, now. you don't want to be a headline because then you're going to get your balls busted when you go to college. But that, that, what I'm saying is the crimes are overshadowing his glory Look, right now. He mm -hmm. doesn't need to be a headline. He earned it. He's doing a good job. Yeah, go to college doing a good and job. have some fun. Craig. I worry. I worry for if he's ready for for the, Will, for the yeah. uh, beer tsunami that's about to hit him when he goes mm -hmm. to college. We have a lot With of lawyers already on. on hand. So hopefully he becomes a medical doctor and then maybe saves one of our lives later. There you go. Yeah, we'll we'll need it. Starting now. Starting yeah, get, anytime. Get through school quick, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Let's take it over to uh, Predict It real quick. Talk about our sponsor, Predict It, the uh, stock market of news and politics. You can gamble on news and politics and make some cash. While sports are out, uh, it's easy to win. Go to predictit.org slash promo slash hard factor 20. And when you sign up, uh, if you go to that URL, that unique URL and sign up there and put 20 bucks in an account, we will match that $20. So we'll give you a free 20. The market I am liking today, I want y'all's take on this is Will, Jesse, the body, the sexual Tyrannosaurus himself file to run for president before June 1st. Right now, the yes is at 30 and the no is at 70. He's going to uh, run? There's, he's there's rumors he's, that Jesse the Body Ventura is running for president. He's, oh, en I hope he's so. entertaining I'm, a run in the Green wanna, Party. The Green Party. I just okay. want to take the yes just to, just so he does run. Well, yeah, we want to follow his president's campaign. Like we, we would definitely, Oh, God. Yeah. Could you imagine if they let him get on in the debates? That would be so fun. Keep in mind, guys. Uh, they won't. The, they won't. If the body decides awesome. to run, if the body decides <laughs> to run, we would have two of the three candidates uh, having stepped foot in the WWE wrestling ring before. Uh, you got Trump. He's made his yeah. appearance as a WWE. He's, he, I think he's taken a sidewalk he's, slam. He's a Hall of or, Famer. Yep, and then you he got, shaved, you got he Jesse. Shaved, he shaved, uh, either shaved McMahon, his head or uh, made, him kick his head. Kiss, he made McMahon kiss his ass or, one, or both. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting. But, yeah, no, he's entertaining. A couple days ago he was saying, no way I'm going to run, and then, like, yesterday he came out and was like, oh, I might do it. I'm going to explore maybe the Green Party. That's what I'd like to do. So we'll, we'll be, see, but it would be hilarious. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of meat on that bone. If you do a little bit of research and kind of get the vibe, um, you know, June 1st look. is a, a month away. I'm going to go. Yes. No, but I like Mexico. Yeah, I think you can make 30 cents on that. But I mean, who knows? I, I just don't think that I mean, a Green Party run. There's already two other for sure candidates, right? Amash and then another guy. So Amash um, isn't for sure. He, he's he, but he probably he's very proud probably yeah. well, he's going to run for lib. Yeah, I mean, it just seems well, like I don't is different know than Green Party. Right. So, right. I know it's two different parties, yeah. I, I, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'd have to look more into I it. Hope so. but I hope he runs just we, we can all hope he runs. I, I don't know anything about the market, who knows. So. Anyway, guys, that that promo code one more time or that unique URL to get your free 20 bucks is predictit.org slash promo slash hard factor 20. So sign up today. Mm -hmm. nice. Uh. Okay, guys, uh, Mark's conspiracy theory about this entire lockdown being a test by the robots and aliens uh, for how easy it's, it's going to be to get rid of us eventually. Right. 
It's got me thinking a little bit. As I got a little bit of would would you rather for you. Oh, I love uh, would you rather. Would you rather live lockdown style forever, assuming that like the robots and aliens took over, mm-hmm. um, and we just had to stay lockdown style forever, or regular style but with absolutely no internet. And the reason I ask that is because it seems to me that mm-hmm. in order to beat the robots, we're going to have to destroy the internet at some point. Really so good, really good question. I'm thinking that that you this is an actual would you rather lock down forever or regular with no Internet. It's a really good question. Do I have to wear yeah, a mask? Quick, quick question. At all quick times? question on this. No, so, no mask. Regular. <clears throat> no, I mean, in lockdown. Oh, lo- oh, absolutely. Masked up. You're masked up. You're, you're hiding in your house. If you go into the street, the, uh, there's it's a drone April, that's going to like it's April 2020 for the rest of your life. Yeah. Uh, with Internet or normalcy without Internet. Right. Are we exactly. shutting down all other electronics too? Like, is it an electromagnetic what, pulse? Work, that... what, what electronics work with other? I, I really want, yeah, exactly. I You'd really, have like yeah, DVDs. What do, you, what do you have like a fucking flip phone? You'd have I DVDs. Re- you I could really, play N sixty four. I really, really want to say the latter. I really want to say normal Me too. without internet. But to be honest, I'd do lockdown with internet. You would? Yeah. Ah, no. I, I, I know. It's like a, it's really hard. I got to a think backyard. About. I got a baby pool. I, I'm fine. If I could, I if I could afford it, if I was make, if I was making money throughout the entire lockdown, I would rather do lockdown than internet. And it's sad. It's really sad. I'm addicted to the internet. I wish it was the other way around. I wish <laughs> no, I, was like, I, I wish I was like a re- fucking Native American and like this. The reason I ask is because yeah. it's got to be. I think I I feel like I don't really even know. Yeah. I'm probably just saying this because I feel it's what I want to say. But I think that I would rather live regular with no internet because I think eventually we would be, rebuild it. Mm. We would we would have oh. the capability oh, to rebuild on. it. Hey, well, come on, that's not in your lifetime. Yeah, not in your lifetime. This, but uh, if it was not, it, stipulation is your kids get internet. You don't. That's true. Your yeah. kids, not you. Yeah. And that's my sweetheart answer is I want to live regular because I want. Re- like, yeah, regular, regular. Then I'd still I still would want to live regular. I think, but but I, but I agree with Wes. I probably am just lying to myself at this point. <laughs> I don't even <laughs> I don't even know if I could do it. I'm trying. No kid locked down forever. Fine. Yeah. Porn DVD sales would shoot through the fucking roof. I mean, like the the porn real, industry DVDs would be in general. Uh, six and Nintendo would be the big player in video games. So, I was happy with DVDs. RPGs, I was fine. I do like RPGs. I could probably do it. That's what I'm saying. You yeah, could, there's could a lot it. you can do without without the internet. Yeah. You could have landline phones. I'm get. I'll, I'll say that could bring regular that back. for sure. All right. Regular, totally regular. No totally. internet for me personally. It would be easy. Yeah, regular. <laughs> A regular, but it would suck. Could you? Because could you imagine going back before oh internet? God, murders yeah, would go up a lot. I'll tell you that's that. amazing. You think murders would go up because cops couldn't use the internet? If, if all of a sudden you took away everyone's uh, yeah, internet, that's true. Yeah. And, Law enforcement and mur- gets weaker. Murderers yeah. would be uh, not getting caught. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's a good point. Anyways, uh, I thought it was a, a brain tickler. It yeah. Because uh, for sure. All right, um, we're moving to reviews and voicemails, and then we'll wrap up the week, right? So this is going to be a lot, though. There's a lot of reviews and voicemails because people have been doing a good job with those. So, Pat, I want to warn you, um, you are still a topic of interest this week. Uh, uh, good right. and bad. Good and bad. It's like, <laughs> it's very, like, I would say more good Yin than and bad. Yin and yang. I would say more good than bad, but there are some bad with it. So just brace yourself, and then there's some good ones. So uh, let's go to Clay Rubel, who said, worse ways to start your day that's nice Uh-oh. five stars he said four idiots no there are mm. worse ways to start your day uh four idiots do their best to give you the news which is more than you can expect from cable news so i agree Great. there are a lot of that's pretty good I, that's so far a good review that's mm-hmm. it uh there's four more reviews and then oh. we got eight voice spells uh this mm. one's from Ch- <laughs> <laughs> this one's from chungus app tester uh, and the title is lick my taint it says uh love the show oh. guys i've been listening every day for around a year now I, unlike most listeners, have finally figured out the difference in voices between Mark, Wes, and Will. Um, and that's a common theme because people can distinguish Pat, but they sometimes can't distinguish us. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah, exactly. So thank you, uh, Chungus. Well, you know, I mean, Tester. we're somewhat homogenous if you haven't been able to tell that. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. Longtime friends and stuff. You, what'd you call us? Hom- Ho- oh, homogenous. homogenous. Okay. Like we've been we've been mixed <laughs> together for a long, Very long period of time. Um uh, next one's from Farmer54321. Uh, I'm now a somewhat informed piece dot 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 of shit, I'm assuming. Uh, longer episodes are great. Between 45 minutes and an hour is ideal, in my opinion. 
Thank you. Also, I think Florida Man Friday branching out works, so he probably is going to like this episode. These out-of-state stooges could have uh, lived in Florida at some point anyways. After all, you can take the man out of Florida, but you can't take the Florida out of the man. Thanks for everything, fellas. That's a very Amen. good point. Yeah. Amen, Farmer. Very, very good point. Uh, I was two- just talking uh, on the uh, Hard Factor text thread yesterday about how uh, Florida would be very tempting to me if they went ahead and legalized marijuana down there. Oh, yeah. I, it's a lot I, of fun down there. I'm probably going to end up in Florida pretty soon, and I don't mind it. <laughs> I love the beach. I'm ready to go. Uh, next one's from Twisted Fang. This one's titled Aliens. Uh, it says, watch out, or he said, watch the unacknowledged on Netflix. It'll blow your mind. Uh, hmm. It'll start to blow your mind, so it's an alien show. Has anybody seen it? The mm-hmm. unacknowledged. I'll I haven't, check it I haven't out. seen it, now. Write that down. Right, that's about. Yeah. Any, do we have any description at all? 2017 no. Disclosure Project founder uh, Dr. Stephen M. Greer offers evidence of extraterrestrial contact, including top secret testimonials, documents, and never before seen UFO footage. Stop well, this. I just got to go pick up my weed from Pat's house, and I'm in this weekend. Yeah. So, yeah. Beautiful. So, okay. Come maybe through. We, maybe we got I will another be there review tomorrow. coming up. I'll Show be there review. tomorrow or today. Yeah. Um, last one is. Go to hell, Ole Miss. And it says, title is Pat's voice. And it says, yeah. I don't think Pat's voice is fake. I think it's a natural douchey voice for a naturally douchey guy. So that oh. one's not, not mm. very nice. Hey. That one's not very oh, nice. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. That one's not very nice. What, what school does he go to? He, he hates Ole Miss. Go to hell, Ole Miss. Maybe is, I hope he's not an LSU Tiger, but probably not. Uh, he probably would have said so, and then he probably wouldn't have he would probably would Yeah, he yeah. probably would have said LSU. Okay, go, go let's Tiger. get to eight voicemails. No. I don't Just know. Hang in there, well, Pat. It's all good. All right, that's okay. Un- I'm gonna unplug my things here. Okay. Some SEC hate. Yo, yo, what's up, boys? It's your boy Zach from Chicago, longtime listener of the show, first time caller, and I just wanted to say, um, fuck you, Pat. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, man, I'm kidding. Uh, I am turning 23 <laughs> tomorrow, the 29th, and uh, I was just wondering if I could get a real quick birthday shout out from the Hard Factor crew. Thanks. I fucking love you guys. Keep rocking it and have a great fucking day. Oh, okay. Zach from Chicago. Happy birthday. Not for me, Zach. Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was, that was, that was great, a good Zach. fuck you. That was like, good. That was yeah, funny. That was, that was a, a great, good fuck you. Yeah. That was a great voicemail. Yeah. So, Zach, <laughs> hey, happy birthday. Sorry, we were. Hey, but Pat, you got the last laugh. We were one day late on the birthday shout out for Zach. So. At yeah. least yeah. one day late. That was my bad. Um, happy belated. Have a good weekend. Roll, roll through the weekend, Zach, with it. All right, let's do the next. We got seven more, so let's keep it going. Okay. What's up, boys? It's Cole calling again from Philly. Uh, I just had a quick content idea I thought I'd run by you guys. Uh, you ever thought about having, like, a, a debate or competition or anything amongst, like, all your regular contributors? So, like, I don't get, like, Dutch Hammer, Big Ounce, uh, that new guy, Digger, who called yesterday. The psycho who, uh, you know, masturbates at work and all that. You ever thought about having him on and, uh, you know, having like a debate or some kind of competition, either, you know, Zoom, FaceTime or like have him call in and conference? Cause I could see that getting real hot real quick. Just a thought. Mm-hmm. Take care, boys. Uh, I love that. Excellent. Excellent God. idea. If we could do live calls, it would change everything. Um, live calls that. would be great. Yeah. Um, we used to, two, be great. I mean, we yeah. used could, to we could gag. do them. We, we would talk about maybe doing a live Twitch stream of the show potentially. And, that, right. and we have the ability to do live calls. Right. I, the guy, the guy that was asking the masturbation questions, I don't know how effective he would be because he would be just super distracted. I think he's Zach from uh, Florida, not Zach from Chicago. Yeah, we've yeah, exactly. also Florida might have yeah. problems, but yeah. we've yeah. also got a ringer, a ringer who's just uh, friends with the sh- friend of the program uh, naturally who loves uh, like conspiracy theory debates. And uh, no, oh, I mean, yeah. I love the idea. We got to work. We got to we got to. Hey, we're going to take that one offline and we're going to figure it out. Because <laughs> I fucking love that idea. All right. Here's some more. Hey, boys, Max from Tennessee here. Just wanted to give you a shout out. You guys are great. You help my commute every day. Uh, during this quarantine, the longer episodes have been awesome. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Awesome. See you guys. So I Fuck play, yeah, Max. Yeah, I just played that Flat one for nice. twofold because Max's voice is awesome. And, yeah. uh, and and he said longer episodes are cool. So that's why I played that Hell one. Hell yeah, Max. Um, nice. Thank you, Max. All right, let's move on. This is a two-parter. So uh, the first one, don't react. I'm going to play them back to back. Okay. 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 Right. Hey there, guys. This is your Iowa correspondent, Colt Mason. 
and I actually might be your guys' first listener. I listened the very first morning after PFT had announced the show on uh, Pardon My Take. I'm not sure how we would confirm that, but, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and claim that title. Anyway, I'm here to help out with the people not being able to tell the difference between your guys' voices. Uh, Wes is the one who has a kid and sounds like he's trying to drown his sadness in milk. Not sure how that's going. Mark is the one that's always surrounded by pussy, but never women. Pat is the one that has the credit score of a pile of cow shit. And I know that because I farm here in Iowa, and I just asked a pile of cow shit what its credit score is, and it said the same as Pat Cassidy. He lives in Austin, Texas. And then Will is the one that is a way less intelligent and way less iconic, but way more fat Joe Rogan. Hope that helps, everybody. Have a great fucking day. Hey, guys. Colton again. Seriously, that was all fun and games. You guys are the best. I love how much outreach you have with fans. Whenever I've DM'd any of you on Twitter or replied to some of your tweets, you guys always reply back. It means a lot. We can tell you're the hardest working boys in the biz. Keep up the great fucking job. Thank you. See ya. All right, good one nice. there. So he busted the balls Appreciate a little bit. It, Colton. And then I think that's a good point. Um, if you DM us, we get back probably to like 90, 90% of you. There is one person who I think is catfishing me and trying to just make me uh, <laughs> say embarrassing things. Uh, so there's so depending on uh, what are they have, doing? If you have a clear fake profile, someone's like trying to egg me on and be like, hey, are you the epic chugger? And like just trying to get me to like uh, talk about chugging beers. And are they making uh, you do new, new chug sure, videos? Pre- no, I mean, that's where it's leading to. I'm pretty sure it's like Nick, <laughs> pretty sure it's like Nick and KB. And I think that. It's a big scam. Uh, but if you're a real person with a real picture and you've been online for years and your avatar proves that, uh, we will get back to you 100% of the times. Um, I got three Absolutely. more. Absolutely. And, three more and uh, I liked, I love the roast. Um, oh, yeah, I yeah. actually, yeah, yeah, guilty. I, I uh, definitely do. Lo- before, I mean, I definitely have listened to a lot of uh, Rogan experience and we have many of the same uh, interests. So, yeah, yeah that's guilty. true. Yeah. And I, I am trying to drown my sorrows in milk, so he's absolutely right. And Pat, yeah. Cass, Pat Cassie does have a shit dog. Do you sh- think I, I could get a cosign with a pile of cow shit? Like, <laughs> yeah. that, help me get along. All right, we got. Three. You could go work off. You could go like work on his farm, maybe, and then you could he could pay you. Three more sounds like love he's, sounds, love, sounds like sounds like Colton's got his shit together. These love to are work good on ones. Farm. These, yeah, that's true. For like a week, it would be amazing. All right, these are these are three good ones here. What's up, fellas? It's Cade. Summer's coming up, and I have nothing to do with no classes. You're always firing fake interns for mistakes on Twitter. Why not have a real intern you can fire? Look, I'm underqualified. I'm not majoring in anything related to politics, news, or journalism. I can't grow facial hair like you guys, but I will give it my all in writing, ideas, or any other way I can help. I love the hard factor brand, and I want to see it grow. All I'm asking for is a shot. I can send my resume and a sweet graphic of my pros and cons. Thanks, guys. <laughs> hmm. That was a nice one from Cade. I don't Shoot think it's your shot. I don't think it's yeah. Cade, the Cade, the guy who chugs with us uh, from different Omaha. Cade, different okay. Cade. Um, but it could be. Oh, we can ask him uh, next Saturday when we're doing the chugging thing. But um, we've hired every intern off Twitter. We have yes. <laughs> We have, and all of our current interns are awesome. So I wanted to take time to play that and thank Cade and say you're at the top of the list. But right now, we have a really good group of interns that are working their asses off. So I don't think there's an opening now. You want to shout out like uh, Rebecca, Danny, Cam. Um, shout out Bubba. Uh, yeah, Bubba, Patricia. 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 Like we got a we got a really awesome group of people that help us out a lot behind the scenes. So thank you, Cade. Uh, we'll we'll think of some. We'll try to think of something for you. Uh, it's probably going to be non-paid uh and we yeah. can't call you an intern probably probably but, definitely yeah but uh <laughs> almost certainly yeah no, no i mean uh yeah like we're gonna uh, ask you amazing. to pay us yeah <laughs> how are you at babysitting kid yeah <laughs> but you're at the top of the list that was a very nice voicemail and thank you uh all right. it's Shoot amazing the support resume, it's yeah. yeah it's amazing the support we've gotten from everybody uh who wants to help and who's, who's a member of the hive and we're just hoping that we can grow the show big enough so that you know one day we could have a you know a bigger broader staff, hell yeah. staff yeah. that we could actually like pay and stuff like that that would be cool so that yeah. was awesome two two ones and these are um pretty good as well last two <laughs> hey guys i'm ryan from dallas texas and i just want to give you all some praise i absolutely love your show i've been listening to it for over a year maybe even longer and i make sure to catch up every time you guys have a show 
because it's one of my favorite news sources. It's entertaining, and you guys have a really great way of bringing some lightness to this tough, dark world. I just have to say, Pat, you're sexy, and you guys are all smart as fuck. I started a podcast on my own and couldn't find a co-host to save my life. So I know that you guys are all really dedicated because it takes a lot to look up all that news and maintain a daily show. Just got to, you know, let you all know, keep doing what you do, what you're great at. And thank you, guys. There you go, Pat. See, I think nice, uh, I'm nice. gonna it's always darkest. It's always darkest before the dawn. Pat. There you go, Pat. <laughs> I'm going to recommend an optometrist for you in Dallas, Ryan. I think you may have just been offered a co-hosting spot on on her on yeah. her new podcast. Yeah. She, sound, she sounded cute, Pat. But that was a very <sighs> good, very good voicemail from Ryan. Thank you. She brought up a lot of good points. Um, we have to at least try to uh, retain the information from the news stories, and and tr- we try to go about eighty percent accuracy. Uh, yeah, we're not perfect, but it is. Um, it uh, requires some some that, that's effort. A- that's a great point, Mark. Process. We yeah. read all. We, we all read the news all day long. All day long, we read the news. Kind of keep reading keep comprehension, up what's going on. and then interpreting it and trying mm-hmm. to be, you know, down the middle and and funny. Changing it up. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, <laughs> thank you for noticing that, Ryan. Uh, yes, we definitely add a few things like. Um, I, I, I usually add like three crimes to people's actual things that they may may or not have committed. They could probably sue me. All right, last one. Mm-hmm. This one is probably my favorite. uh Oh. Hey, fellas, Bob Ass again. Uh, It's actually ass, like ass cheeks, but I do appreciate Bob Ass. Uh, That was a big hit with my dumbass friend calling me Robert Appetizer. And I do love appetizers. (laughs) I mean, who doesn't? (laughs) Anyway, doing much better than last time. Smoked some weed about it. Thanks, my wife. Watched the NFL draft. That's got me feeling pretty good. Anyway, I'll let you go. Uh, just going to eat some guacamole while I wait for my bagel bites to get done. Bob Ass, a.k.a. Bob Ass. Over and out. Bob Apps. Yeah. He's Bob Apps to us. Yeah, he'll <laughs> always be Bob Apps. <laughs> he loves always appetizers. Bob <laughs> He was, I need a I did, need a Bob Apps shirt. How did, he, how did we miss How did we miss that it was Bob Apps? He's Bob Apps. Hey, his great last name. Oh, and we man. thought it was Apps. He's he order, He's always ordering the sampler. Yeah, yeah. no, he's Bob Apps for us. Uh, yeah. yeah, and yeah, right. we should we should get a Bob Apps shirt. Yeah, he never he thought the best shirt. the Bob best Apps part for Bob Apps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the best part for Bob Apps is that he never thought that his last name was going to be altered to something else. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. Yeah. Like because you have ass, yep. you've always gotten that accentuated. Now yep. we're not even interested in the ass. No, hey, Bob Apps, not at all. Mm-hmm. That's why everyone's taking a, a every, all of his friends and family are having such a, a fucking laugh about it because oh. we turned it's, into Bob Apps. It's, it's so much yeah. more interesting thinking. About a guy that it's only orders, orders appetizers apps. at he's restaurants. Like, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's always like, "Are you guys ready to order?" Because he knows what he wants. And he, he, he's like, "Do I have to wait till the entrees come out?" Because I know my oh, meal's gonna be ready. Yeah. He I know my so, meal's not holding it up all at once. Or he gets so pissed if he orders an appetizer and everyone thinks it's for the table. Right? No, that's my entree. I'm Bob yeah. Apps. By the way, Bob Apps is definitely gonna be included in any of these uh, debates or like things that we oh, have. Yeah. With, with, he's in. He's in the group. <laughs> Unbeatable if you debate him in appetizers. Yeah, yeah for if you, sure. If you debate him about food. All right. Um, well, that's it. That was all eight. So that's going to do nice. a hard factor. Go ahead, Wes. No, I was going to say that's great. Um, yeah. I, I wasn't going to say anything. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's looking like uh, the boat race is going to be next weekend. I started coming up with a list of people that have expressed interest right now with the host. We are at 10. Someone DM'd me at like 4 a.m. last night. and was like, hey, Pat sent me to you. Was yep. like, so Pat was, Pat was DMing with the listeners at 4 a.m. That's dangerous. Uh, so no. right now we're at about 10. And uh, <laughs> we, we had 18 last time. So DM me at Hard Factor Mark on Twitter, Instagram, or just DM at Hard Factor News on Twitter, Instagram. And also, if you, if you have an opinion on, on Pat's mood and how it changes uh, past midnight, let us know. Yeah, if, if Pat's saying some weird shit, Pat's them. saying some weird shit to for you. <laughs> let us know. Um, also, there's like you don't need to be a fast. <laughs> what are you? Yeah, what you, convos are you having? These late night convos, encouraging ones, man, <laughs> uplifting ones to the hive. You're not a. I'm a late night boy. 
Oh, uh, good. You're not good. a psychiatrist. If uh, if you want in, uh, you don't need to I be need like one. a fast chugger. Yes, exactly. Hopefully they are. You don't need, you don't need know, to be a fast chugger. That's kind of why I'm always fishing for that. Are you fishing for What do you do? Black, you're looking for <laughs> fishing for praise. What do you do for a living? Couch. Yeah. <laughs> Is this Ryan? Is this Ryan, Ryan from couch? Dallas? <laughs> <laughs> Pat's like, if, they're, if they're more upset than Pat, Pat's like, ah, I gotta, I gotta kick you out. I'm sorry, I'm yeah. gonna keep fishing. Um, yeah, you don't have to be fast at drinking. Just come hang out with us. So just DM us if you wanna uh, hang out with us on Saturday night. Hey, buy some shirts if you got a little bit of dough, like the free Joe Exotic shirt, lockdown turn up, uh, and some sizes are left on the 50% hard factor shades tee, which got like a new glossy uh, font, looks sexy. I wish I had that one because my mm-hmm. old one's not as good looking. Um, the weather is getting nice, guys. So go get some vitamin D this weekend safely, please. We love you guys. Thank you for listening. And most importantly, have a great fucking day and weekend. Oh, yeah!